another fun lesson with the roller coaster life. We're on lesson two, and I cannot wait to start this lesson. I think this is going to be a really good lesson to learn. Lesson two is about God will provide, and He will. God will provide whatever need you need in your life, whatever problem you're facing, He will provide for you. You need to believe and trust Him. Our main focus today is when I am in need, God will provide for me. So let's get on with our lesson. We're going to start with our intro video to see what kind of roller coaster Brian's taking us on today. All right, Brian, take it away. Hey everybody, it's me again, and I'm ready to take you for another ride on the roller coaster life. You remember last time when we started learning about the prophet Elijah. He went from the low of being a nobody to the high of being in the king's court giving him God's message. Next thing you know, he's running for his life and he's down by the brook with nothing to eat. But God takes him on another high by providing ravens to bring him food. He was on a roller coaster life. <laughs> But today, you're gonna learn how God provided for Elijah in a very cool way. I don't wanna spoil the story for you, but I will tell you this. God does something that'll make your jaw drop faster than a giant hill on the X coaster. What's the X coaster, you ask? I'll show you. All right, this is it, the X coaster. It starts on a vertical ascent 150 feet in the air, then a 360 degree turn, and it drops you at 65 miles per hour. Let's do this. Oh man, that was so intense. Well, it's time for you to get into your lesson today about how God provided for Elijah and how he'll always provide for you in your time of need. I'll see you next time on The Roller Coaster Life. Wow, that was a cool roller coaster. I, I like roller coasters, but boy, some of these roller coasters are intense. Okay. Let's get on with our Bible story today. Our Bible story is about Elijah and the widow. A widow is just a person whose spouse has died, a husband or a wife, and they are alone, maybe with some kids or, or whatnot, but a widow is when um, you have lost a spouse or a loved one. So let's get on with our story today. When we left Elijah, he was in a pretty cool spot. Don't you think? God sent him the ravens to bring him the food. He also had plenty of water to drink because he was beside the brook or the river. However, you might remember the warning that Elijah had given to King Ahab. It will not rain. So what happens when it doesn't rain? Well, the rivers dry up and that is exactly what happened to the brook where Elijah was. Elijah was back on the roller coaster. He went from the high of being beside the flowing river to the low of being beside the dry river bed. God spoke to Elijah, go and live in the village of Zarephath. There is a widow there. 
who will feed you. So Elijah traveled to the village of Zarephath. When he arrived, he saw a widow gathering sticks. He asked her, Can you bring me a cup of water and some bread to eat? The woman replied, I don't have a single piece of bread in my house. I only have a handful of flour and only a small amount of cooking oil. I was about to cook this last meal and then my son and I will die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Make a cake for me and then make something for you and your son. God will provide. Can you imagine what the widow must have thought? Here she was about to make a small meal for her son and herself. Now this prophet comes along and says, make me a cake first. She must have thought he was crazy. But the widow did just as Elijah had asked. She gave Elijah the cake to eat. Then she went back to the flour and cooking oil containers. Do you know what she found? She found even more cooking oil and flour. She made a meal for herself and her son. And not only did she make one meal, but every time she went back to the flour and cooking oil containers, there was even more flour and cooking oil. God had provided a miracle. God continued to provide all the flour and cooking oil she needed for herself and her son. That was a cool story. Now, today, we will be learning how God can provide for our needs. Just as he provided for Elijah and the widow, God will provide for our needs as well. I think it's time for our power verse for today. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what Buster has for us. All right, on to the power verse. boys and girls it's me Buster and my best buddy in the whole wide world Slappy we're here to teach you today's power verse you ready today's power verse says and God will generously provide all you need 2nd Corinthians 9 8 did you see that power verse? It was awesome. Now I need the girls. That's right, girls. Stand on up and say the power verse with me on the count of three. Ready, girls? Here we go. One, two, three. And God will generously provide all you need. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Good job, girls. You can have a seat. Now I need my boys. Come on, lazy bones. All the boys stand up and say the power verse with me. And Slappy on the count of three. Ready, boys? Here we go. One, two, three. And God will generously provide all you need. Second Corinthians 9, 8. Good job, everybody. You can have a seat. Boys and girls, God will provide you with whatever you need. Now, I'm not talking about crazy stuff like the world's tallest ham sandwich or a rocket power golden llama. No, I mean everyday stuff. God's going to provide you every day with all the stuff you need in your everyday life. Now that you know that, I need the boys and the girls to stand up and say the power verse with me and slappy on the count of three you ready here we go one two three and god will generously provide all you need second corinthians 9 8. good job boys and girls you can have a seat hey it's been awesome teaching you today's power verse but you want to know what time it is it's time to bust stuff Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh boys and girls, I just love watermelon. I think I'm gonna make me a big old fruit salad. Here we go, on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. 
That was a cool power verse. God will provide for our needs. Okay, let's continue on with our lesson. God will provide. Have you ever had a major need in your life? Maybe you moved to a new school and you had a major need for friends. Maybe your parent lost their job and your family had a major need for money to pay bills. Maybe you had a huge science test coming up and you had a major need for an A. Whatever your need was or is, it is a difficult feeling to have a major need in your life and not be able to do anything about it. Today, we heard an incredible story about how God provided for Elijah and the widow. There are several lessons that we can learn from this Bible story. Admit your need. When Elijah asked the widow to cook him a meal, the widow quickly admitted she had a need. She admitted that she was in need of flour and cooking oil. In fact, she admitted that she barely had enough to cook herself and her son their last meal before they died much less make a meal for Elijah. She didn't act like everything was okay. She admitted, I need oil and flour. This set her up for a miracle. If she had no need, then there would have been no need for a miracle. Why is admitting your need important? Well, there are some people who say, don't admit you are sick that shows you don't have faith to be healed. Or they say, don't admit you need money because that shows you don't have faith that God will provide for you. For some reason, there are people who believe you should never admit or confess your need. Does anybody notice anything about my head? <laughs> of course, I have a hat on my head. Now what if I say, I don't have a hat on my head, I just don't. Does that change the fact that I do have a hat on my head? <laughs> of course not. I can deny the fact that I have a hat on my head all day long. But the fact is, I still have a hat on my head. Just because I refuse to admit it doesn't change the facts. It's the same in our lives. If we never admit our need, it doesn't change the fact that the need exists. We must ad admit our need to God. If you are sick, admit, I need healing. If you are lonely, admit, I need friends. If you are sad, admit, I need joy. When we admit our need, it is another way of admitting, I can't do this on my own, God. I need you to provide for me. Obey God's instructions. So Elijah told the widow to go make him a meal even before she made one for herself and her son. Now, did that make any sense at all? Any? <laughs> of course not. Why would she make this prophet a meal when she didn't even have enough for her own family? It would have been easy for the widow to tell Elijah to take a hike, dude. I'm not making you anything. We're going to eat this food and then we'll die. But she didn't do that. She obeyed the instructions that the prophet of God gave her. As a result, she received a miracle. Sometimes God gives us instructions that don't seem to make sense. We are in need of money. God gives us the instructions. Trust me by paying your tithe first. We think, God, do you not get it? I don't have enough money as it is. It doesn't make sense for me to give money in the offering. There are many times that God gives instructions that may seem to make zero sense. 
but we must be like the widow and obey. Now, I want to invite everybody to my house. In this envelope, it contains instructions to get to my house. I'm going to give these instructions to you or to anybody who wants to come to my house. Now what if they decide they don't want to obey these instructions? They will get lost. They most likely, likely will never make it to my house. If they want to get to my house, they have to follow the instructions. Now God gives us instructions. We must not think that we know better than God. We definitely don't know better than God. We must not think that we can handle things on our own. We must obey his instructions. And if we do, if I obey, then he will provide. So God provided for Elijah, and for the widow, and her son. Because the widow was willing to obey God's instructions. Just that simple. If we will obey God, he will honor that obedience. By obeying, it shows that we trust him. It shows that we believe he can and will provide for us. It is so easy to think we know how to better handle our situation than God. I mean, how many think that we got this, God? You don't have to worry about it. Uh, I've been in that boat before where I have said, you know what? I'm just going to handle this on my own. I don't need any help. When it ended up being that I needed God's help more than anything. We must remember that God is greater than any problem we have. He is smarter and wiser than we are. Admit your need, obey God's instructions, and he will provide for you, just like he did for Elijah and the widow. Wow, that was definitely an amazing story. I am so glad we learned this valuable lesson. It's taught me a lot that God will provide for my needs. I really hope you take this lesson into consideration into your life. I'm pretty sure we have somebody that wants to teach us what's up today. My man Skittles. All right, Skittles, you're on. What's up? 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 Ah, oh, yeah, what's up, everybody? It's me, the SKI, two and double T L E S, Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about how God will provide. So, anytime today somebody asks you what's up, you tell them, I know God, He will provide. God will provide for you anytime you need it. If you need food, ooh, apple pie. If you need money, ooh, five dollars. That don't taste so good. It don't matter what you need, God will provide whatever you might need, baby. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. I know God, he will provide. And that's what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor and I'm living for my savior. Skittles, out, bang, bang, yeah. Thank you, Skittles. That is right. I know God, he will provide. You tell that to yourself. I know God, he will provide. Thank you so much for listening to our lesson for today and learning how much God will provide for us because he loves us. We are his children. Oh, I can't wait to get on with our other lessons. I'm so excited to learn about what God has next for us. Now, I'll see you later on our next lesson. On to Brain Drain. Brain Drain. All right, boys and girls, we are on to Brain Drain. All right, let's see who was paying attention to the lesson today. Number one, what's up? 
I know God, he is cool. I know God, he is awesome. And I know God, he will provide. Personally, it's all of the above. But our what's up for today is, I know God and he will provide. Good job. Number two, what was the name of the roller coaster that Brian rode today? Powder Keg, X Coaster, or the Renegade? All sound really cool. Which one was it? X Coaster. Awesome. All right, number three. What happened to the brook where Elijah was staying? It dried up, it flooded, or it turned to blood? <laughs> Let's see which one. It dried up. Good job. All right, on to number four. Who did Elijah ask to make him a meal? His mother, the chef, or the widow? I think we all know this one. What do y'all say? The widow. That's right. All right, number five. What two things did the widow say she didn't have enough of? Salt and pepper, bacon and eggs, or flour and oil? Let's see. What do y'all think it is? Flour and oil. That is correct. Number six. Did the woman ever run out of oil or flour after making the meal for Elijah? Yes or no? This should be easy. No, of course not. She never ran out after that. Number seven. According to our lesson today, blank your need. Admit your need. Ignore your need or deny your need. See if y'all remember it. Admit your need. Good job. Number eight. According to our lesson today, blank God's instructions. Ignore, forget, or obey. I wonder if God's instructions are important, we should never ignore them or forget them. We should obey them. Correct. Number nine. According to our lesson today, if I obey God, he will what? He will smile, he will provide, or he will cry. Let's see. He, he will provide. That is right. He will provide. And number 10, where was our power verse found? Let's see if you remember. Psalm 119 verse 11, Psalm 66 verse 5, or 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. Let's see who remembers where, where it was found today. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Good job. Good job, boys and girls. And thank you for watching uh, the second lesson of this wonderful roller coaster uh, life that we're living. And don't forget to subscribe to get all of the new updated lessons. All right, bye for now.